Welcome back to Kaleidoscope with Daisy Cousins. Well, if you're anything like me, you despair at the fact it seems like every artist and musician out there nowadays is on the woke left. Not because they're not entitled to have those opinions. I mean, after all, everyone is entitled to be, you know, wrong. But because artists shape culture, and as Andrew Breitbart so famously said, politics is downstream from culture. That is, if you can affect how people think, which is what culture and cultural forces do, you can affect how they vote. Hence the fact conservatives culturally are at a disadvantage as the makers of culture are generally left wing. So it is always so refreshing and heartening to find an artist who is not woke and is happy to speak for the millions of people who disagree with the woke mantra. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the show the wonderful Emily James from the Australian country music band, the Emily James Trio. Emily, it is so fantastic to have you here this evening. How have you been? Hi, Daisy. I've been well. I've been well. It was, um, we're still buzzing after last week when we, we met you at the, the Digital ID rally. So mm. we've been having a great week. Oh, that was such a fun day. And I can't wait to talk. I can't wait to talk to you about that. It was like, as you say, like lots and lots of buzz. Um, so just to start with the Emily James Trio uh, is an anti-woke country music band. And as I mentioned, most artists are so left wing nowadays, at least publicly. We don't know what they think privately, but certainly publicly. So tell me, how did the three of you get together and, and, and what inspired you to write this kind of music? So James, uh, who was our drummer, he and I have been friends for quite a while. And he, um, he and another guy, James, who was our guitarist, um, had been chatting about putting some music together and um, they thought we need a, a singer. And James didn't actually know I could sing. And um, anyway, he, he saw me on social media doing some performances and he rang James and he said, I found our singer. She just doesn't know it yet. So <laughs> I got a phone call from James. Yeah. And, and he said, hey, we're thinking of doing this project, um, but it's not going to be your, your love story breakup type thing you know it's going to be as you said at the root of it anti-woke um and i say anti-woke but it, it's we're patriot to you know australia we love australia we we love our way of life and and we can see it very quickly eroding um particularly over the last four years or so you know our way of life and what australia was is not really you know what mm. it used to be and and James and I had both been travelling Australia and um, just the conversations that we'd had with complete strangers, it, the, the common theme or common comment was the world's gone mad and you can't say that anymore. Mm. You know, so th there's all these um, inspirations from just these conversations that we've had with people around Australia and we thought there, there's people out here there who want to hear this kind of music. Mm. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think people get so sick of all the, you know, people like, oh, well, it's a while ago, but Katy Perry, when she was so anti-Trump, I was like, no, come on, Katy, you know, this, this other. It's refreshing. I think people like hearing a different voice, as I mentioned, out there in culture. Mm -hmm. And um, it's interesting you've been travelling around Australia and talking to people. What I've noticed over the last sort of four years is that culturally there's been so much hate directed at Australia and at, at our way of life. You know, it's, you know, blaming people nowadays uh, for events that a our ancestors uh, committed, you know, 200 years ago. And a lot of people, for instance, of, say, Anglo descent have only been here for 20 years. Maybe their parents came, you know, it, it, it's so nonsensical. Um, did you get any comments about all that sort of anti-Australia sentiment? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, when we released the first song, which was, well, you're going to play that soon probably, but um, it, it was called Don't Welcome Me to My Own Country and that that was exactly the attacks that we got. It, mm -hmm. You know, yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't actually realise um, how anti-white people were in this country. It, it kind of blew me away a little bit, yeah. Mm. Yeah, because the thing is... Um... I actually agree with leftists when they say there's no such thing as reverse racism because they're right, there is no such thing as reverse racism because there's only racism. You know, it, it, it's, it's mm. you know, if you mm. discriminate against a person for the colour of their skin, whether it's black, white, brown, 
um, it's wrong and it's vile and, and it's unacceptable. It should be um, totally taboo and, and utterly condemned across the board, I think. So it's, it's, in, it's interesting, mm. um, you know, it's politically correct to have a go at people with, with, with paler skin nowadays. Um, and look, mm. speaking of the song um, Don't Welcome Me to My Own Country, uh, a few months ago, it was actually uh, a week after the voice referendum, uh, that loss which all the lefties were terribly upset about, um, the three of you gained some publicity, shall we say, when in the wake of that mm. referendum defeat, a song of yours, which was Don't Welcome Me to Come Own Country, gained a bit of traction. Um, to say, you know, the least. We have got a clip here, actually, from the official music, music video. Well, let's have a quick listen. I heard kids at school today They don't sing the anthem no more Instead, apologize for things That happened 100 years before Don't welcome me to my own country I've been welcome all along And I don't need a ceremony To tell me I belong So I <coughs> Catchy song. I love the melody. You know, the yeah. lyrics are catchy. It's memorable, um, and it's self-explanatory. I mean, it's a protest against the re relentless welcome to countries that we get in Australia. Everywhere you go, every time you land in an aeroplane, it's a welcome to country. Um, and so mm. many of us of all cultures in Australia are, are very, very sick of that. But the reaction you got, you've got from the left was, as you'd imagine, swift and brutal. Um, online trolls mm. tried very hard to cancel you. So uh, I know this might be difficult to talk about, but are you able to tell us, tell us a little bit about that time and about what that backlash was like? Yeah, so obviously we knew writing this sort of music that not everybody was going to love what we had to say, um, but that that's, you know, we were writing for a particular genre of people mm. um and so we thought you know when we release this we're gonna we're gonna get a little bit of hate for this you know there's there's gonna be people that don't like it and so the first 24 hours we received all this positive messaging and comments and and that sort of thing and there was the odd you know comment saying that they didn't like it but they were quite respectful you know disagreements mm. or whatever and then um overnight it it just it went crazy and it got about 80,000 views in about 10 hours. And we woke up to hundreds and hundreds of these just most disgusting comments. Mm. Um, you know, and, and it, we, can, we could handle obviously getting some people that didn't like it and, and having a respectful discussion about it or whatever, but it, it was not just... Um, just a, a bad comment. It was flat out abuse. You know, we were getting death threats. We were ended up having our businesses attacked. Anyone that was associated with us was attacked. Anyone that commented with a positive message, they were attacked. So then that made people fearful to to like or to follow because they were then being attacked. And I just, I, I honestly sat back and just thought, what has happened to Australia? You know, this is not... This is not the Australia that I was brought up in, and mm. yeah, it was it was it was not nice. It was a pretty um, eventful twenty four mm. hours. Yeah, yeah. Well, look, it's um, it's really rough when that happens. I have, I had similar pylons happen to me very early in my career, um, you know, which which I I got I got through eventually. Um, but it is intim it is intimidating. Like you you realize that the longer you do this kind of stuff that um, those people, they can't actually, they can say a lot of stuff, but they, they can't actually hurt you. But that's a lesson that's learned over, I think it took about at least two years before I really genuinely stopped caring at all about what people said, said about me online. Mm. Um, but for you mm. guys, just starting out, I, can, I know exactly how intimidating and how, how scary uh, that moment in time is. And it's what's so mm. hypocritical um, of these people is that the left goes on and on about how women specifically should be able to express themselves in public without being abused. And yet the minute <laughs> a woman like you, who happens to have the wrong opinions, raises her voice, it's just open season. That's extraordinary, isn't it? 
Yeah, and the the attacks on us were very much directed at me personally. They were very personal attacks. And, you know, I, I didn't really take it to heart because I knew what they were saying wasn't true and that sort of thing. But, um, yeah, it, it's rather ironic that, that we've got these people out there that are fighting for women's rights and women's safety and, you know, freedom to express themselves. And yet because I said something that... Um, didn't fit the narrative or, mm. you know, they, they weren't worried about my mental health or my safety no. at all. Well, their, you know? their goal is to destroy you. That's the thing. They probably, and I know mm. this is a very dark thing to say, but I've seen people like that celebrate when their targets self-harm. Like that that's how brutal these mm. these people are. It's I have seen that online with my own eyes. They celebrate when people die, like, you know, if they don't like, if they die of natural causes, they're, they're disgusting people. Um, but your reaction yeah. Yeah. Um, to that trolling campaign, um, I found this interesting, was to take a lot of your material off the internet, um, you know, the song, your social media pages, etc. cetera. Um, what drove you to make that decision? Mm. <laughs> that was um, tough. That we, we sort of, well, because we don't live in the same state, so we all phoned each other and just went, Oh wow! You know this is this has got um, very out of control, mm. um, and and as you said, we were only new to the game. We hadn't experienced this sort of thing before, and it, it was when these threats, you know, started coming through that we just, mm. we, you know, sometimes you have to think with your head and just go, do you know what? This is a three-minute song. Is this worth, you know, risking our personal safety and our businesses and our livelihoods? Um, and so we, we had to make a pretty quick decision. Do we leave it up or do we take it down? And we, we all just, we chose like, let's just, we need to take this off. We need to regroup um, and mm. we need to reassess all this because we, we weren't, yeah, we weren't prepared for that amount of mm. um, hate and abuse. So, but that, you know, you learn, as you say, and, um, and after we regrouped ourselves, we, we decided, you know what? This is all going back up because this is exactly why we're writing this music because this is what they do to people and there's too many people out there being silenced mm. and, you know, this is why we're writing this music. We want to say things that people are too afraid to say and that hence our album title is Someone Had to Say It. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, and I'm very pleased you've you've put it all um, back up. I can I know I know exactly what that felt like being in the middle of that. Um, and it is it, all you want to do is just go no. But that is fantastic that you all made the decision to put everything back up because it's great. It's great music. Um, and you mentioned mm. um, that you have have an album. Uh, tell us now about that album. Mm. What kind of songs and where can people find it as well? Yes, yeah, so we've got uh, nine songs on there, which they sort of cover a broad spectrum of um, topics. You know, don't welcome me, you know, it, it encompassed one particular topic. But the whole album kind of is um, kind of enough's enough, you know, mm. with that, which is kind of the theme across our songs. Um, so there's just, there's just some nice country music on there about, you know, living in the outback compared to living in a city or, you know, there's um, there's songs that are about, events that have happened over the last few years and you know we just wanted to try and give people a voice who felt like that they were alone because that's that's a big thing that happened over the last few years that people were made to feel like they were crazy and and they were alone in their thoughts so hopefully this music they can put it on and go hey I'm not the only one you know that's thinking this um so yeah, yeah someone had to say it is the album and um you can find that on our website which is uh, the Emily James trio.com and we're also part of Interesting you spoke about culture at the start. We're part of a, a network of um, other artists. It's called Culture Liberated Artists mm. um, who are all trying to sing about the same type of thing. So you can find the music on there as well. Fantastic. Yeah. So everyone, yeah, head head to those places and download Emily's album. And, and Emily, just before, just quickly before we go, uh, we both mentioned the Digital ID rally that we attended. Mm. I spoke, you and the wonderful Jameses, who are members of your trio, sang. Uh, very quickly, mm -hmm. in sort of 30 seconds or less, uh, did you have fun that day? What are your thoughts? We had great fun. It was it was beautiful to be able to sing in front of a crowd who we were writing this music for and to have, you know, people like and love what we had to say. It was We were buzzing very much afterwards. It was, yeah, it was wonderful. And thanks to Malcolm Roberts for inviting us down. It was great. 
Mm, yeah. Oh yeah, I mean, I, I, you you were fantastic. I listened to a few of your songs and I thought, God, it's a, such a shame what happened to them because it's such great music. So amazing you got to play to that crowd that loves you and amazing that um, Senator Malcolm Roberts uh, put it on. Um, Emily James, this has been absolutely delightful chatting to you. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Um, you you and the two Jameses that make up the trio are extremely resilient. Um, I sincerely hope that you don't have to cope with those slings and arrows again. Um, mm. Just keep on keeping, and um, I, I certainly hope we see a lot more of you in, in the days and years to come. Thank you. Thanks for having me on.